Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today I'm very excited to be traveling all the way back to 1973 to listen to my first song on this channel from the masterpiece The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, and that would be Time. I think a few people might have heard of this song. Anyway, don't know what to expect. Uh, really excited to hear this. It's been built up for me by several of you. And uh, the only songs I know from this album are Money and Us and Them. Us and Them is one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs, probably the very first one. Well, that's not true. Another Brick in the Wall is the very first one I heard in the early 80s. And uh, Us and Them I've known for a few years now and absolutely love it. Gives me chills. It's one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs. Probably my number one, at least before I started this channel. So let's see what time has to offer. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Very different.
love that part. Wow, very different. Interesting. Very uh, bass heavy. Really, really hearing that. Very dark, very menacing song. It makes sense. It's about time and the passage of time in relation to our life. But wow, it just feels different. I'm so used to being on the animals vibe as of late. And uh, wow, really, really interesting. Like I said, this seems very bass heavy, especially those very dark, menacing, slow uh, notes in the beginning. Very, very effective. Uh, also, the drums in that beginning section with the uh, tick-tock sound going on. I read that was done with a bass guitar, but I believe those were the roto toms I read, and I love that sound. They were very distant, very reverbed, but it just sounded amazing, kind of added to that menacing feel. Um, I've mentioned this in a lot of songs I've heard, but I love when they have different instruments on different sides of you. We got the uh, great guitar on the left channel, left side of my ear, and then you got a different melody going on the right side with, I believe, the electric piano. But it seemed to be there the whole time, those instruments. And it was just guiding the song along. You know, there was a lot going on. But those two things were kind of the bookends to the song, literally, you know, on the left and right. Uh, just holding the song together and keeping it going. So that was really interesting. And um, also I noticed uh, some great background female vocalists here. Very different. They were pretty subtle, you know, but just put in the mix just enough to give the song, you know, some extra impact and some extra flavor and something very different. I think this may be the first time I've heard female uh, backup singers in any Pink Floyd song. I could be wrong. I don't think us and them. I can't really remember right now, but um, anyway, probably one of the first times, if not the first time I've heard a uh, female backup and they sound great and fit perfectly with the song. Just overall a very, very dark song to me. That's how I'm hearing it musically and of course loving it because I love dark songs. So let's finish it off. Nice backup. Amazing guitar work on the left. Yeah, this one seemed to have a very different sound, but with all the classic Pink Floyd elements, you know, everything was executed perfectly. Everyone and every element was just amazing as always, but again, slightly different, maybe because it's earlier in their career, 
yet. I don't know if I've heard anything before this, but or just could have been Alan Parsons as the producer taking a different turn. Not too sure, but really, really enjoy this one, and it stood out for me as different. Um, heard at least one or two great guitar solos there, very dark as well to fit the dark first section of the song. Uh, as far as the singing, I was really excited in research to hear that Richard Wright uh, sang lead on the bridges here, and I was so engulfed in the song that I kind of wasn't really uh, paying attention for when he came in. I think I heard it, but I'll have to go back and make sure because to me they sound very similar, uh, so I couldn't differentiate very clearly between the two. Um, but again, I'll figure that out. Um, I know they harmonize together at some point, Richard and David, so really excited for that. Um, speaking of singing, like I said, love the addition of the female singers. But uh, there was this one mini solo, or riff we'll call it, by one of the singers, just one of the females. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. That was really, really short, but really, really powerful. Really loved it and caught me by surprise, as you might have seen. And that ending section I really loved. It seemed to take it down even uh, lighter and softer and slower. And I loved that subdued feeling, yet it still had me completely captured and in the song's grip, you know, every part of me. And I really appreciated that. Very soft, very uh, mellow ending, but deep, if that makes sense. And I think it was going to fade into the next song. Actually, I know this is a seamless album from song to song. So, uh, you know, I wish I could uh, go into Great Gig in the Sky, but, you know, anyway, that's coming soon, I promise. And I'm sure that one's just as great, and I'd love to see how this song flows into that one, but really how all the songs flow together on this, because I've heard the transition from money to us and them, and that's just so sublime. That's due to the beginning of us and them. Those notes just captivate me, can bring me to tears just hearing the beginning notes of us and them you know, those long held notes. But anyway, really, really different, really, really interesting song. I gotta think about this one. So I just read the lyrics and this is clearly a very universal song as far as these lyrics are concerned. Uh, they apply to each and every one of us on this planet. And I think the main point is that life is a cycle that we're all in and sometimes it spins very fast. And you know, the point is uh, make the best of what you have, make the best of your life and do it now because it just goes it's fleeting time is fleeting and before you know it you know it may be too late to achieve certain things and it's easy to say but it's hard to put into practice especially when you're young and you feel like you have your whole life ahead of you i just reacted to another song with almost the same theme you know of you know life going so fast moving so fast it's very easy to sit on the sidelines not participate not put yourself out there uh, but carpe diem is the point you know you're going to miss so much if you don't do it, you know, and it's all up to your own self, your own convictions. Um, I see themes here of, you know, the fact that growing old is inevitable. And like I said, comes quicker than we think originally. And also the fact that some regrets are inevitable as we grow older, because I'm sure everybody has regrets in life. Nobody's perfect. We all know that phrase and no one's life is perfect. No one's choices are perfect. So really really realistic song that applies to everybody basically so i think because of all these lyrics that i just discussed that's why they made the song very sad and gave it such a dark tone because they're talking about the dark undertones of life and you know that it's not all roses and uh, they're being realistic about it about the pains and the shortcomings that we all can go through in life and it's put forward uh, deeply in the lyrics and deeply in the music and i appreciate that completely Okay, like I keep saying, this one's so different, at least to my ears, from what I've heard. Uh, I'm a little on the fence as far as the rating, believe it or not, between Five Golden and Epic Platinum Records. But I think that's because there's so much to digest here and so much different type of things going on to digest. Um, not completely different, it's still Pink Floyd, but I think you know what I mean. I definitely know that this song is going to grow on me over time the more I listen to it. And in the context of listening to it with the rest of the album as a whole, which you all say has to be done, and I know that. So um, I'm going to be forward thinking and rate this one the Epic Platinum Record Award. Yes, because probably in a few hours I would have rated it that anyway. <laughs> I know how I am, and I know how this band is, and the effect they have on me, and everything I just heard was amazing. So I know it's well deserving of that. But like I said, just a lot to grasp onto. It kind of took me by surprise a little. Didn't know what to expect. So um, anyway, it's deserving of that award completely from me. 
Okay, some amazing fun facts about this song provided once again by my amazing subscriber Shane, who's also the certified Pink Floyd guru. And uh, these facts, you know, I read them before uh, listening and they really helped me to understand the song better. So here we go. Time is the only song on the album credited to all four band members. Okay, so they each had a hand in writing it. Roger has said that one of his inspirations for this song was the sudden, mind-blowing realization at 29 years old that his childhood was not about preparing for a life that would start later. Instead, it started at birth, and at any time you can take the reins and guide your own destiny. The chiming clocks at the beginning were recorded initially by Alan Parsons for a quadraphonic test recording. He played the recording to the band, and they decided to add it to the song. The long TikTok intro, which I mentioned, performed by Rogers Bass, was very intentionally created to give a sense that nothing is going on and the listener is wasting their time, something the lyrics pick right up and run with. Interesting. I definitely enjoy that section though. Gilmore's doubled up voice has more grit in it than we are used to hearing from him, which always lends added impact to Rogers' lyrics. Rick Wright takes vocal lead for the first half of the bridges and harmonizes with David for the second half. Rick had taken lead vocal several times in the early days, but by this time he had receded into the background. I really appreciate his voice being there and can't wait to go back and hear it. Going by traditional song composition, the crystalline bluesy guitar solo happens too early, giving the sensation that life is flying by too quickly as explored in the subsequent lyrics. This song in the album Cycle is where the complementary metaphor of the sun makes an appearance, setting up the eclipse that closes the album. The final movement is a reprise of the opening track Breathe. It explored the end of one's lifetime, steadily slowing down to represent aging and ending in a church with that bell they were so fond of referencing for a funeral, which transitions into the next track, the great gig in the sky. So all in all, a really powerful, complex and deep song. I mean, life and time itself, you can't get much deeper than that. And, and who better than Pink Floyd to represent all that? and put it into an amazing song with timeless, complex, dark, wonderful, beautiful music. So excited to hear the rest of this album. I've now only heard three songs and really, really excited to hear the rest, which will be coming soon, because I think a certain album has a 50th anniversary coming up next month, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll be reacting to everything very soon. Obviously not this one, but um, the rest of the, uh, I believe, nine songs, including the two that I already know, because I've not done reactions for them, uh, Money and Us and Them, but um, I'll have my tissues ready for Us and Them just in case, because the music alone, without the words, the music just gets me every time, never gets old. And that's what I love about Pink Floyd and others, you know, they never get old no matter how many times you hear them, if it's a timeless and amazing song. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. If you wish to chat, engage with me, or simply help support the channel, help it grow. We're doing well so far, past 1K, so, so grateful for that. And uh, looking to build this community even more. So appreciate all the engagement, meeting you guys, chatting with you guys. It's wonderful for sure. And what better topic to discuss than amazing retro music. So you stay safe and hydrated. And remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night and a little Pink Floyd, or a lot. <laughs> I will see you next time in the past.